Who's the greatest Marine general of all time? Is it general number one, general number two, or general number three? I'm your host, Bruce Whitman, and this is a special edition of Mark and History. Here are the markers for three highly decorated Marine generals, each with an incredible story to tell. So how can one determine who is the greatest? Most medals of honor earned? Most beloved by their men? Or the general affecting the future of the entire Marine Corps? To help get the discussion rolling, we offer three short excerpts from our three Marine General documentaries. After you view the clips, feel free to offer your comments below regarding your choice for the greatest Marine General of all time. Chesty felt every problem had a solution. Late one night, Chesty deliberately lit his pipe in the open and then quickly fell and rolled over in the dirt to draw machine gun fire from an enemy nest. His own gunners cleaned out the Japanese machine gun nest by firing at the muzzle flashes. At the outbreak of the Korean War, Puller was once again assigned as commander of the 1st Marine Regiment. It was during the Battle of Chosen Reservoir that Colonel Puller won his fifth Navy Cross for heroism. Massively outnumbered, Puller was quoted as saying, We've been looking for the enemy for some time now. We finally found him. We're surrounded. That simplifies things. Puller and his Marines conducted a fighting withdrawal from Chosen Reservoir that crippled seven Chinese divisions in the process. We're not retreating, he told his Marines. We're about faced to get more of those bastards. Be proud, you're first Marines. Over the course of his four wars, countless engagements and instances of solid leadership, he earned over 50 awards and citations including five Navy Crosses and one U.S. Army Distinguished Service Cross and Silver Star. Although he never was recommended for the Medal of Honor, the United States' highest award for valor in combat, he doesn't need one to be considered the most decorated Marine of all time. As a result of the Veracruz campaign, Congress authorized officers to receive Medals of Honor, which had formerly been awarded only to enlisted men. For his actions on April 22, 1914, Major Butler was awarded his first Medal of Honor. Butler attempted to return his medal, explaining that he had done nothing to deserve it. The Secretary of the Navy, Josephus Daniels, ordered Butler to keep it and wear it as well, so as not to diminish its merit for those other military men who also received the medal for Veracruz. The following year, Major Butler was in Haiti, fighting Haitian rebels. During a battle that lasted less than 20 minutes, Butler and his Marines took the rebel stronghold and crushed the resistance. This ended the revolution. For bravery and forceful leadership as commanding officer of detachments of Marines and seamen during this action, Butler received his second Medal of Honor, as well as the Haitian Medal of Honor. Major Butler achieved the distinction shared with Sergeant Major Dan Daly of being the only Marines to receive the Medal of Honor twice for separate actions. By the end of his military career, Major General Smedley Butler had received 16 medals, five for heroism. He is the only Marine to be awarded the Brevet Medal and two Medals of Honor, all for separate actions. Before I offer General John A. Lejeune's clips, I want to discuss pronunciation of his last name. Although many Marines call their camp in North Carolina Camp Lejeune, it should be called Camp Lejeune because it was named after General John A. Lejeune, and that's how he pronounced his last name. And the best way to honor a Marine is to pronounce his last name correctly, like his Cajun family did down in Louisiana. On July 28, 1918, 
Major General Lejeune was given command of the entire U.S. Army 2nd Infantry Division. It was the first time that a Marine officer commanded an Army division in combat. On the French battlefields, he put the needs of his men over his own. As an example, he became the first Marine commander to go to the end of the Chow Line, a lasting Marine Corps tradition. Major General John Lejeune was named Commandant in 1920, the highest ranking officer in the U.S. Marine Corps. General Lejeune used his skills as an expert administrator, diplomat, and gentle persuader to keep the Corps funded while protecting the Marines from political plans for absorption into the Navy or the Army. During his service as Commandant, Lejeune presided over what is known as the First Enlightenment of the Marine Corps. Lejeune drove changes in the organization, training, education, and equipment of the Marines, thus transforming them from the 19th century colonial naval infantry into a combined arms amphibious force needed to prevail in World War II. Now it's your turn to voice your choice for the greatest Marine General of all time. Share your comments below and feel free to support your position with stories, interpretations, annotations, opinions, notes, or observations. I will share links to the full documentaries in the description window. I welcome all your comments. Thanks for watching. If history can be taught with stories, it can never be forgotten. Please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to stay informed on the latest videos.